Hey guys, welcome back. It's Gerald from BG Badminton and the courts are finally open. It's phase two. We can finally get started in badminton court videos. However, I haven't kind of planned one on the court video. So right now we're still off the court kind of video. Alright, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about an effective cool down routine or it's my cool down routine that can help you prevent injuries. To be very specific, it's actually to minimize injuries. But you know what? I needed you guys to click on this thumbnail or title, right? So let's begin. So I'm going to include a lot of my personal experiences when I'm sharing with you guys my cool down routine and this is really what I wish someone had told me when I was just starting out or you know playing badminton. It would have saved me from weeks and weeks of injury. You know, I remember the worst injuries or the worst injury I ever had while I was playing professionally. So back then, I think it was the patella tendonitis, which is a knee injury, and it was grade two. So one more grade up, I may have needed to, you know, go for a surgery. And funny thing was that I was one of the least injured inside the national team. So that gives you some perspective of how prevalent prevalent injuries are in the national team. And yeah, so it was caused by in fact, stiff muscles. So basically, I did not stretch uh, my IT band enough and that caused my kneecap to move a little bit and that created basically inflammation. And I hope you guys don't mind I use my phone because sometimes Gerald gets nervous on camera and I just want to make sure I don't miss anything out because cool down is such an important topic and I do not want to miss out like, you know, important details, right? So hope you guys understand. I'm sure you don't mind. So in fact, I would think that stretching or cool down is just as important if yeah just as important as training because imagine like if i have a one hour training regime i would set instead of training the full hour i would cut it down to like 45 minutes and have 15 minute stretch if i have a 30 minutes you know workout maybe cut it down to 20 minutes and a 10 minute stretch that's how important cool down is and that is because uh if imagine getting injured what happens is that you start you know all your training that you've built up for the past depending on how long you're injured for kind of becomes for not and not to mention while you're deproving your competitors are improving so you're not only not catching up you're getting further from them all your effort has been for nothing and you're in pain so that's why cool down is that important it really minimizes injuries all right so to, for today's uh, video what you need is just going to be a towel and in fact sometimes i would prefer a yoga mat because that's a lot bigger but this is what i used back in the old training days because i was sponsored by this and i was too lazy to get a bigger much bigger towel so that's what i'm going to use the way we're going to structure our exercises is going to be top down so when we cool down we want to start you know from the neck all the way down to our calf calf muscles and the way we're going to do it is 30 seconds each exercise and the way we count it's going to be slightly different instead of counting one two three we're going to count in thousands so it's one thousand two thousands up to thirty thousands and the reason being is that counting in thousands allows us to kind of take a pause like you know we count a little bit longer and that's roughly how long it takes to uh, do a 30 second stretch so ideally you want to do three sets per muscle group but honestly i often only do one set and that explains why I'm actually quite stiff and you'll see more later. Alright, so when we are doing this workout, we're going to start top down. Why? First is because it's easy to remember. You're just going to go like here to your arms, then to your abs, butt down. Okay, so that's the first thing. It's easy to remember. The second thing is that it's always or it is a much better idea to start standing up instead of immediately lying down on the floor after an intense training. Why? Because it's actually putting a lot of pressure on your heart. And theory is going to be another video, but in this video, I'm just going to show you my workout routine and just know that it works, okay? All right, so first up, we're going to start with triceps. And the thing about tricep stretch, right, I learned is that instead of, you know, when I first started, I kind of tried to stretch across, which is like that. But now, I learned it's better to stretch back and pull the tricep back. And you get a much better stretch this way. And again, after once you get into position, you feel the stretch, you count to 30,000. So 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. Or you can count in your head. You don't actually have to count it out loud. Unless it's in a team setting. So all the way up to 30,000. And then switch hands. Again, not across. Back and pull back. And then get it nice tricep stretch yep okay so that's tricep so once you're done with tricep we go to the opposite side which is the bicep so for the biceps you're gonna need like a wall and for me i'm just gonna use like a badminton pole around here because it's convenient uh right so 
what you want to do is you want to point your palm downwards. Put it here and stretch. Stretch. Yeah. So if you can stretch your, if you can flex your tricep, that kind of helps it a little bit. Point it down, up. Yeah. So there are many ways you can stretch your bicep. Turn away. That makes it stretch even more. Yep. Yeah. So 30, 30 seconds, switch arms. Uh, and biceps often not stretch when, most people kind of neglect the biceps when they play badminton because it's not convenient to stretch the biceps. And after you're done with the biceps, we're going to head right back up to the shoulder. And the reason why I didn't start with the shoulder, right, is often after an intense training, you're catching your breath. It's kind of weird to be stretching. You know, when you you try to stretch your traps, it's like this, and you're catching your breath and you're like... <sighs> so that's why I started with the triceps. Even when I do this, <sighs> it's, still, it's still not that bad. But so now we're going to head right back to the traps. And the traps is kind of like your neck muscles. A lot of people call them your neck muscles, but it's actually more of your shoulder area kind of muscles. And it really supports your smash. You want to make sure your traps are nice and comfortable. So the way you do this is you tilt your head to the side and then you pull your head this way. Okay, so uh, funny thing is that for the traps, right, you want to rotate your neck. So around and here. So you need to figure out which part is the stiffest and make sure you get the muscles nice and stretched. So the goal, right, is you want to make, the goal is to make sure that you get your muscles nice and soft because your muscles act like a sponge. It absorbs the impact from the training. Yeah, so if it's not soft and spongy, it does not absorb the impact. So imagine it's a rock. The, you know, when you land, there's an impact. It does not absorb. The impact goes straight through your muscles into your joints and that's how you get injured. So often it's chain link, they're all linked together. And yeah, and often let's say if you get like a knee injury, sometimes it could be traced all the way to your back. Your lower back is stiff or your butt. So that's muscles, they are really connected uh, together, they work together. And if you don't stretch them well, that's how you get injured. All right, so now that we're done with the uh, tricep, bicep, shoulders, you're gonna move down up the shoulders, right? So now we're gonna start with the shoulders. Hold it like this, elephant stretch. And you know, when I was a kid, often what I would do is I would put it like that, or I would do like this, elephant stretch. But the problem is when you do this, you do not stretch your shoulder as much. I found out that if you rotate your elbow outwards, you actually stretch a lot more. Yeah, you feel the stretch a lot more when you point your elbow outwards, hold it high versus this. Yeah, when you get lazy, you do like that. Hold it high, point it out, you stretch a lot more. Then chain side, 30 seconds. Yeah, usually you're supposed to do about three sets. Did I mention that I only like to do it one set because I'm very stiff and yeah, don't do it. Try to do more sets than I do. You get a lot more results when it comes to recovery and improvement and flexibility. Okay, so after we're done with the shoulder, the next thing we're going to work on is the rotator cuff. And the rotator cuff is so, so, so often neglected. Even I neglected it and I got like a, often uh, I get this, back, you know, when you smash and somewhere in your shoulder hurts, that's more often than not the rotator cuff rather than the shoulders. And the way we stretch that is put this across. It's a little bit funny and you kind of pull it. So, okay, imagine you're doing the elephant stretch, but instead you pull it back and then you pull it down. So you pull it down to really stretch that rotator cuff. I mean, if you can't do it, then you just, you know, bring it down. Uh, but the goal is you really want to get that nice stretch because this motion is often used in badminton and that's where a lot of the injuries happen. So we need to change arm and do it the same, this way, pull it down. So that's the rotator cuff stretch. So hold it for 30 seconds. Again, count 1,000, 2,000 because that's a lot longer. So, so far we've covered traps, shoulders, rotator cuffs, uh, biceps, triceps. Now we're gonna move to the forearms. So forearms is often used in badminton. Why? Because you flick the shuttle, you smash, Forearm. So the way we stretch the forearm, simple. Bring it down, fingers down, pull. Easy. All right, so you pull again, 30 seconds, switch hands, I mean, switch sides. So you stretch both sides of the forearm. People often call this the wrist muscle, but actually, the wrist doesn't really have the muscle. All the muscles from, you know, the, the motion from here comes from this muscle. So the forearm muscle is what you're looking at. So both sides. And make sure to balance and stretch both arms because you don't want to have imbalance that's not good for the body all right so the other side and there we go so 
Now that we've done you know, this out, we're going to go head back to the chest. So to stretch the chest, it's much better if you have some sort of wall where you can just stretch against the wall. But if you don't, don't have access to a wall, what you can do is you make sure you pull your arms back and then stretch your chest out and then pull. That's how you stretch the chest out. So if you, the, if you want to get more stretch, I think it's pull the shoulder higher. If, yeah, if you move your shoulder up, higher, you get a lot more stretch in the chest. So make sure you keep your chest out. So by then you, by this stretch, you would have already uh, like catch your breath if you were having an intense session. So again, 30 seconds and on to the next exercise. So the next exercise is we're going to move down. So we're going to head towards our abs. So for the abs, we're going to need a towel. <clears throat> Feels so good to stretch in the middle of the court again. <sighs> right, so for the abs stretch, down, push up, and stretch. Really stretch the abs. Mm, nice and good. So point up. There we go. So again, 30 seconds. And doing multiple sets if you need to. And then now, we're going to move over to the hip flexor. So hip flexors is really important when you're doing lunging. You want to make sure that this remains mobile. So the way we do this is... Put the knee on the floor, lean forward. And you want to make sure you keep your body upright because if you lean forward and backward, it's not actually very good for the body. Yeah, You don't want to stretch this muscle and cause problems elsewhere. So you want to make sure you keep your body upright and then you lean forward. Right. So for the legs, right, what we're going to do is we're going to go front down and then we go back down. It's a little bit easier to remember. Right, so this 30 seconds. Change the leg. And then this way. And then lean forward and stretch here. Mm. Make sure your toe is pointing straight. It helps a lot. Yep, so that's the hip flexor. And then we're going to go down. We're going to stretch the quads. So since we're in this position, a very simple way to stretch the quads is this. Let's pull it up. Yeah, this requires balance. And you're going to feel it. Oof, I really feel it. I think it's because of the run I did yesterday. So that's how you stretch the quads. Again, 30 seconds. Now, how many exercises we did so far? I lost count. So this is here, here, and then chain side. But you get the idea. All right, so now that we've done the quads, or the hip flexors and the quads, we're gonna slowly rotate towards the back. So now we're gonna stretch the IT band. So IT band, it's gonna be a little bit complicated, but stick around. Okay, so the way we do it is that we pull it towards the back, and then stretch down with the leg. So you kind of do the uh, quad stretch first and then move your leg here, press it down and then you're going to feel the stretch by the side. Yeah, so this is one way you can do it without the use of a wall. If you have a wall, it's much easier. So you have the wall, one way you can do it is just to uh, put the leg that you want to stretch behind and the other one in front, arm against the wall and then you push your hips sideways. Kind of push it forward uh, push it sideways towards the wall and you should feel the stretch of the IT band. This is much easier, uh, but again, you need the wall. So, But I usually stick with this and this is so important and because I missed this out during the days where I was competing as an athlete and that has cost me like at least four or five months of injuries. Basically what happens is that your knee, it's kind of like, you know, Okay, your knee is connected to your quads and it can be moved to the left and right. If you kind of see, you can kind of move your knee. And the thing is, if the muscle is stiff, it pulls your knee to one side and that creates like uh, uh, the grinding, the grind against another bone uh, and that caused an inflammation and that was how I got uh, my patella tendonitis. So do remember to stretch the IT band. It's so, so, so important because almost nobody does it and that's why you get a lot of knee injuries. So next up, we're going to talk about stretching the glutes, aka the butt. Uh, and how we do it is basically you need to sit down and put one knee, one leg over the other and you can just kind of push forward. So you, the goal is you want to try to get uh, your knee as close as your body as you can or you try to reach forward. So as you can see, I'm not exactly the most flexible, but you get the idea. So remember 30 seconds and then switch over to the other side. 
Right, so next up, we're going to have to stretch the groin. So groin, uh, here's how it's done. Uh, I do the butterfly stretch. There are a couple of variations. So that's one way you can do it. Uh, again, you want to try to get the sides of your knee onto the ground and you, or, or you want to try to reach forward. So that's two ways you can kind of stretch a little bit more for those of you that are a little bit more flexible than I am. All right, so after the groin, we're going to move further down. We're going to work towards the hamstrings. So the hamstrings, basically what you need to do is touch your toes. So I think that's the easiest way to kind of describe it. And some people like to do it from the side. I personally prefer to stretch for my toes towards the front. They both work the same thing. And here's how it's done. Again, hold it for 30 seconds. And yeah. Now switch over to the other leg and do the exact same thing. So last but not least, once you're done with the hamstring, it's time for the calves. So calves, I, would, I prefer to kind of switch over, turn around and come into this position. And basically what you want to do is try to make sure that your toe is pointing forward. So you don't want to put your toe sideways. If you, can, if you put it sideways, you're stretching different angles of the calves. So if you don't stretch your calves, basically what happens is that your Achilles tendons become very vulnerable to snaps, tears, injuries. Again, so, so, so underrated. Very important to stretch your calves. All right, so now that we are done with the stretch, let's head back over to my office. All right, so for those of you that are doing the 30-day challenge, we are almost, almost at the end of it. So keep hanging on. You're almost there, guys. And... Basically, by now, your body should have been a lot more accustomed to the workout, so it should not be as sore as when, you, when it first began. Maybe you even stepped up the progression and made it a little bit tougher for yourself. If you did, that's fantastic. But, 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 here's the thing. By now, your body should have accumulated quite a lot of fatigue. Like, you know, some parts are a lot more stiffer than others. So what you need to do is to find out areas that are stiff, like ultra stiff. Like for me back then, it was uh, my IT band that was weak and, I'm oh, sorry, my IT band that was very stiff and it was my rotator cuff that were very weak. So my rotator cuff was weak, my IT band was stiff. So find these areas because if you don't find them, you let them sit around, eventually they will create like injuries. And usually it's, if it's obvious, that's easier to, to find out. Sometimes it's not so direct. Like for example, you get back pains, turns out it was your hamstrings that was really tight and that kind of let the injury move up towards the back. So sometimes it's not that obvious. So you want to make sure you solve these small problems while they are small. Don't let them accumulate and become a big problem. So in the next video, I'll be talking about strength training. How do you build up strength? How do you have progressive overload and build up the strength so that you can smash a lot harder? Or what are the dimensions of things that contribute to a hard smash? I want to talk about that in the next video. So stay tuned if you haven't already. Be sure to subscribe and check out the next video over here. And I'll see you next time guys. Take care.